Jamie, I just want to uh, start off, just kind of, um, just introduce yourself and and the background that that you have had, kind of for university where you're coming from, and and you know up to kind of when you graduated and stuff like that. So if you just don't mind, just giving a bit of background information first of all. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jamie Kerr. I um, have um, been working with Mark now for probably seven or eight years. But prior to that, um, I studied at University of Glasgow, grew up in a little place called Bridge of Weir. Um, my um, dad's a vet and my mum was a vet nurse, so I kind of thought about doing vet now, but decided it wasn't for me. Um, so I went into the kind of dental field. Um, as I say, went to University of Glasgow and I've stayed around Glasgow and now just stay north of the city um, with my family. Um, I uh, initially worked in a practice in Coke Bridge doing my VT and then after I finished VT I moved up to a practice in Cumbernauld um, not too far away from Mark's, Mark's Font. Um, yeah. I started working with um, a chap called Stevie Dugan, who's uh, good friends with Mark, and that's sort of how um, our, our paths crossed. So I worked there for five years, um, just doing a kind of mix of NHS and um, private dentistry, a kind of jack of all trades, doing a bit of everything. Um, did a wee bit of six months smiles at the time, which was a, a kind of uh, braces, um, and just tried out my hand at a lot of things just to see what I kind of fancied doing, and um, you know. I had a quite a good list when I started there, which was nice. Um, nice start to associate life. I took over from two retired dentists, and um, that was that was good. But I, you know, I was busy. You know, so I had to you know see thirty five, forty patients a day, which was great um, because it gave me lots of exposure to treatments. But um, you know, it, it starts to take its toll after a wee while of of, um, of knocking your pan in every day for for that amount of people. But um, yeah, but good relationships with patients. Um, it took a wee bit of time to sort of see my work coming back and things like that. Um, but yeah, um, and, and a few patients um, that I did some treatment on, some implant treatment and things like that towards the latter part of my career in Cumberland still come see me, which is quite nice. So that's, um, so yeah, just kind of finding my way in the in the world of dentistry, I suppose, in the first wee while. Um, and then, as I said, my Mark and I's past cross um, due to doing a kind of restoring evening, I think, you, you came well, up. Let, let me pause that there, James. So let's, let's go back a wee bit, because that's right. our, our kind of journey started together. Yeah. Um, and so you're, you've, you've come through, you've, you've graduated, um, you've graduated, you know, you've clearly enjoyed yourself at, at university. You, you guys have got, there's a really kind of strong group of friends that you've got there that, that are all, you know, good lads. Um, and... You, you know, you stayed close, and and you know, you, so you've you've progressed into part of general dentistry. When did when did you kind of start to feel that you wanted to kind of choose one or not not kind of corner you into one kind of dentistry? Where did you start to say that you want to ex- to explore one type of main of as the main part of your work rather than doing absolutely everything? When did that kind of strike a chord with you? So. Um... Going back to what you were saying about yeah, we had we had lots of fun at, at dental school. The um, uh, I've stayed close mates with with Big Jamie, um, who worked for you from VT. Um, I did apply for VT, but obviously didn't make the cut. <laughs> didn't stand there, obviously. <laughs> I came back to haunt you eventually. Yeah, sir. So you know, uh, Jamie, you know, was always singing your praises about the practice and things like that, um, which was great, and he was doing. A lot more kind of private work than what most people were doing you know post just post vt because i think you're still kind of finding your feet but you know james always had a good eye for cosmetics and things like that so um you know so that probably planted the seed a wee bit from okay. from doing a bit more sort of niche stuff than just the sort of you know drilling and filling like the rest of us were doing and yeah. um, i always I, you know, I was happy to try everything when I was, as I said, I did a bit of, you know, ortho and stuff like that originally, and I thought maybe that would be my sort of, you know, my my forte for a while, but I think I just, I, I always have quite enjoyed, um don't know if this, this says the wrong thing about me, but I've always quite liked doing surgery and things like that, so I don't know if I'm a wee bit um, sadistic in that point of view, but so, you know, I was always, you know, quite good at taking out teeth and things, um, I never really liked root canal treatments and endo, um, I think probably because I perfed my first tooth when I was in VT and that's just put me off from day oh. one so like 
it, it kind of found me in a way that I was better at it. Um, and uh, yeah, so and then I, I decided to sort of do a surgical course. I think I think at the time uh, we were referring uh, implants down to you, uh, Mark, to you know do the placements, and then we were restoring after you'd done a kind of restoring evening, and then I decided I just. I, you know, I quite like surgery, quite like taking teeth out and things like that. Um, I'd maybe explore the avenue of doing implants, not thinking that I would end up, you know, where I am now, but again, yeah. just because ortho, I quite enjoyed it up to a point, but um, it maybe just wasn't quite for me, you know, what maybe wasn't good at it and, uh, as I wanted to be. Um, yeah. You know, I was, I was good at, you know, treating the patients and building up repl- uh, um, relationships with patients, but, I, you know, there's certain things that, you know, I, I can openly admit that I'm not as good at uh, as some people like, for example, Big Jamie's much better with cosmetic work and, you know, shades and colours and that sort of stuff. And I just don't have an eye for that. So surgery sort of suited me and that's why I sort of kind of okay. force that. So, I mean, so your, our, our path first crossed when um, the practice that you work for in Cumbernauld would refer their implants to DOTS and it was a kind of refer and restore and um, that, that started you off your progression. That's when... When I met you for the first time, and um, and you know we we built a, a relationship from there. Just before we kind of move on to the kind of part of um of, of your kind of progression through implants, when you've moved from uh, an NHS practice, which was you know predominantly NHS and um, all patients are registered in NHS, and, and you get the you know the fairly standard way, you know, people who want you know tooth colour crowns and composite restorations and things like that, that would be on a on a private basis, um, and the, the kind of historic the way that the NHS private mix has worked in, in the vast majority of practices in Scotland, moving to a, a wholly private practice where um, typically there's no kind of there's no cons and caps, there's you know, a degree of of what it seems like at the time of the NHS of a kind of safety net of guaranteed income, um, where kind of percentages and sliding scales and things can can vary. What what were your concerns about coming into to work in private practice at that time? Um, so initially, when we kind of started speaking about it, um, I I was I was doing a little bit of part time work at Dots. I was you know doing the odd day here and there, and um, just kind of get my hand in it. Uh, surgical stuff um my first actually worry was upsetting my boss that I had at the time because I'd built up a good relationship with him but you know um at the end of the day we have to look after number one and look out for yourself but and 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 our my boss was very understanding of that you know there was no there wasn't much scope for progression for me um and this um you know I've would you not say that's because it's it's done and handled the right way it's a yeah. case. Of, it's not. A, it's not a, a slap and a kind of resignation. It's a. Here's my plan going forward. Here's what I see. Don't think the practice set up to to do this. How can I phase myself out and help you phase someone else in? Kind of yeah. idea. And that that's certainly what, what you did. Yeah, I mean they were they were very good at um, allowing me to sort of start my implant journey. I you know I bought all my own equipment and things like that, and and you know d- did a lot of work behind the scenes for that. Um, but I got to the stage that. You know, I was I was becoming too, you know, competent at it. I wanted to do more of it. You know, I wasn't doing enough of what I wanted to do. For example, in my case, implants, but it could be anything. I wasn't doing enough. I'd be doing a couple of months and then you'd you'd not do one for a couple of months and then you'd forget and then it you'd you know you feel like so you have to kind of yeah. work it. So, you know, I think they, they knew from the off, I was quite honest with and open with them to say, like I I I, this is where I want to get to, and and if the practice that I'm in can't, you know, fulfil that, then 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 I'm going to have to obviously, you know, open open doors, and and you know, we did it as you say, we did it the right way. We spoke to them, and and we gave it, you know, they they kind of knew probably I was going to eventually leave um, because I wasn't scoped to maybe buy in and that you know into the practice or st- you know open home practice. So that I had always always been quite open that I kind of wanted to have some sort of ownership in a practice whether it was that one or, or another one and, and the way it wasn't that scope to do that in that practice so so that was my sort of initial um but secondly was as you touched on your kind of NHS safety net um that you know you, you kind of grow up looking at the SDR and, and your and your line 40 and thinking all right okay that's my cat's gone and I had it as I said I mentioned earlier I had a good list because I've taken over from two guys and combined them into one yeah so, you know, you've got that sitting, you know, that's sort of your your kind of rainy day funder or, you know, that, that pays the bills sort of thing, if you like. Um, but 
you know, I was I was doing as much as I possibly could and I wasn't really seeing much progression. I was kind of every month earning about the same and, you know, I wanted to progress, wanted to get better and, and wanted to, you know, um, progress myself, you know, development-wise and and financially probably as well. And yeah. therefore, you know, having to take that step slightly into the unknown, having to take a leap of faith um, with yourself, you know, you know, it helped that I had Jamie there to speak to about it because he'd, he'd been working with it for a long time. So, you know, and, and hopefully this video that we're doing helps someone make that sort of jump because it is hard to kind of sort of take yourself out and say, you kind of open yourself up to it. I'm going to probably have a couple of months that are a wee bit tough and, you know, you're not, you've not got your little, you know, safety net of your caps cons that you're in. But then see when it ramps up. It blows out of the water and then you, you you know you think god i wish i'd done it years before <laughs> you know yeah so it's that kind of uh 2020 hindsight isn't it so i mean one of the things that we do is, is always and it was always offered to you but i think that you had you know kind of built up your own kind of uh you know personal kind of rainy day fund anyway but you know if anybody coming into us as they they build up and only as you've experienced it's, it's just a case of getting to the end of treatment some patients or some payment plans start to to get to get paid in that your your income generally through any kind of private practice would drastically should should increase from from an NHS from our you know you you know right across our group the the guys that are with us and, and the type of dentistry that you're doing and, and how you see them where there's not a single one of them that looks back and goes oh I, I didn't make the right decision there and and it's you know that's the big part that when I meet younger dentists looking to make that step of of and, and get them to let go it's you know they're they're Fallen an already tread path there. This is nothing new to us, or but it is new to them. We understand that we try to address that and their concerns in early stages. What's really important, I think, that we do is that we offer to you know make sure that they have us that slush fund themselves that we'll provide them and, and we'll you know give them an income maybe when on that first month where they're they're yeah. they're starting their checkups and they're not going into treatment yet or or they're just getting some of the bigger kind of treatment plans going and, and finding their feet. So it is that kind of four to six week period generally and um, that it just takes a bit of time to build up. But we're there to support funds and and, and for maybe some that are coming in part time it can sometimes take a bit longer. But you know we'll support that in the same way as we support their um, the finances that they need to get their education done in their in their in any kind of further further training. Do you do you see that as Something that sets the the, the group apart, and, and you know, you know, from your point of view, of seeing all the other associates coming into other other practices, because they've all come from a very kind of similar background to yourself. They've come from NHS practice. They may not have decided what areas of dentistry that they're in yet, and some never do. They just want to be a general dentist, which is absolutely fine. But um, you, you see, you know, you see their clinical stuff that a lot of them post a lot of it on Instagram. Um, you know, to me, it's certainly the, the the quality of the work really stands out and. Behind that is, you know, the stuff that sets us up, sets us apart from from the majority of practices and how we attract patients to the practice and and, and they end up in your chair for coming for assessment. Do, do you mind kind of explaining how that you feel that sets yeah. apart? Uh, the core values that the practice hold and the, and the group hold, as uh, you know, at, at the time I came in, it was just really dots um, that was there, but obviously it's, it's expanded since then. But the core values have remained the same. You know, I remember, you know, I had. Um, a few issues with, and I think a lot of dentists have this, um, where they're maybe not getting paid on time, or you know things are wrong, and you know. And when I came in, I I think I owed the practice money for about two or three months <laughs> because it's just the way things work because of the stuff I was buying in and, and stuff. And I remember um, Lorraine, who's the practice manager at the time, who's who's now the business manager, saying to me, "Look, don't worry, you know, we'll we'll give you, you know, a lump." a lump sum to kind of keep you going how much do you need to kind of pay your bills and stuff like that and I was just like I was blown away I was like my god I've gone from a practice that maybe sometimes that was a bit of a a, a joke at times um, you know pardon any other way to phrase it to get paid for what I was due to actually get given money that you know I actually wasn't due yet and and so that was from the word off but the um, you know it's quite apparent that quite a lot of the people me included have either recommended friends, family members. I've got a few other friends that work for the uh, the group. I've got my brother-in-law works for the group. You know, and you wouldn't recommend working for the group if you didn't, you know, believe in it and yeah, and yeah. happy. And I always say to people, look, don't worry. The first couple of months, 
will be a wee bit up and down, but it's like that in any job, you know, in the NHS. I remember people, you know, going in their, yeah. their schedules are all over the place for the first six months. So it, it takes it takes a bit of time. Um, I say, don't worry about that. It'll come good. Um, and it always does. And as you say, there's nobody, I don't think, in the group that, that probably says, oh, I wish I was still at the NHS. So, I mean, financially, as, as we were talking about, financially, it was definitely, a, you know, it was a, a concern because you're kind of, taking a stab in the dark a little bit, um, albeit you can get advice from people that are doing it already. Um, but equal to that, probably possibly even more than that, was the chance to progress more than um, I was was doing probably, you know, I'm off, off my own back um, in my practice alone. It's, it's much more a group mentality here. I think a lot of dentists get quite isolated with regards to they work in their practice and they just along and they do their own thing whereas here we're all trying to you know and you end up going in courses with a group he's going to to you know they're all doing the similar sort of work and things like that so it's nice it's like a, a like a big family it's good to, and it mm-hmm. makes it less and you've always got support of saying you know you know i've got this case has anyone seen anything like this and stuff like that and um, whereas i think on your own sometimes you maybe speak to your boss but if you don't have a great relationship with your boss or you're in a single-handed practice mm-hmm. then you're kind of on your own and you feel a wee bit like sort of left marks. I always think about it, I think of us as a kind of um, like, a, like a sports team where everybody's heading for the same goal, we're all pulling together and, and at times somebody's not performing, maybe performing at, the, at their best that, that everybody else picks them up and, and pulls them along with them and, and so it's, it's, it's all going together that, that, that's, you know, and my job in that is the kind of the coach of direction and make sure motivation. And then if anybody has any individual needs, wants, supports, then then it's, you know, my job to oversee that that throughout the team, that that's all been delivered, whether that's um, financially, whether that's some some personal issues. uh, We've seen a lot more, you know, over kind of COVID and and lockdown, making sure that, you know, teams get everything they need and we never have that isolated mentality that you see, which is, is so common in dentistry. We get told that, you know, the, the responsibility is yours to get, you know, treat the page properly, the responsibility is yours to do the notes, you know, so there's a lot of pressure on dentists, so try to take, you know, a, that away as much as possible while providing in the right kind of levels of, of support. So in, in terms of looking at, because you, you've probably forgotten, you know, where you've come and, you know, and, and this is this is because of the NHS system that other practices like where you've been have maybe not have not been able to support that move that you wanted to do because of the shackles of the NHS system. Um, you know, the, the, you know, good people to work with that have nothing but the best of intentions for their practice, for their patients, for their teams, but the, the system holds them back. Having now moved into, into private practice and, and working wholly private for a number of years now, in terms of what we do of, of before we get to the clinical part, to attract patients in and make sure that you're getting the the right type of patients for the right types of treatments that you want to provide that end up in your chair and are, are kind of laid on a plate for you effectively. They're still you've still got to do the assessment and do the treatment correctly. But what what do you think? What is it that sets it apart of, for what we do that, that bring those patients in where you are play, now placing hundreds upon hundreds of implants um, every year and providing some and showcasing you know some absolutely brilliant treatments? What what, what do you, how does that happen? I think I think there's obviously a number of you know reasons that it happens. Um, I think the main ones are obviously our our um, sort of push on social media sort of stuff, which was done by yourself way back, you know, in the videos with you with your spiky hair and things like that. <laughs> I had a bit more hair and it was a, bit of a different colour. Yeah, <laughs> um, but at that point nobody was doing that. You know yeah. what I mean? And so that sort of gave us a, a sort of uh, a start. Um, and then we've sort of all okay it's, it's changed it's not as much on facebook and things like that now it's you know other other platforms and stuff and different things we're always trying to be ahead of the curve you know yeah. so we're all be one step ahead of the you know the competition not so much just because we want to be everyone but because as you say we want to bring the right people in we want to show them what we can do and um, you know because there's a lot of people out there probably even more so now than ever because of covid that are they can't maybe get a dentist or need a specific type of dentist and they you know they can't get in so so that's obviously helpful to bring the right people in um this, obviously in my previous practice i didn't have anyone like a, a treatment coordinator at all and that is a game changer for you know what we now, do now you have three now we've got three yeah. um yeah so yeah it's it, which is you know it, it, a lot of the time i was finding that my old practice 
even doing implants, you were getting people in for assessments, you weren't even charging them and they were just wasting your time. And whereas that gets very much, you know, brought brought out of the equation because they do a lot of the legwork for you. They tee them up and all we have to do is check clinically, are you able to do it? And obviously sometimes things have to change and you know things are maybe worse than than they expected or whatever. So but nine times out of ten it's you know it's uh, teed up and you just have to, you know, um knock it out of the park and, and then yeah. So that I mean that is yeah game changing for 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 what we do. Um so I mean, right. so you're, you're you're working in a culture where everybody pulls together. You've got patients who come in and um, really, you know, you you, you feel that your these treatments are, are desired in the best interest. Of the patients they um, they really value what you're doing for them. So we're providing great dentistry and a great patient experience. In terms of your progression and, and training, what what do you think the kind of key ingredients to you to get to the clinical stages of what you're able to deliver you know just kind of generally not so much focused on implants and then how do you continue to try and stay at the you know you know all when we look at that bell curve I always think of of our clinicians being in that early adopter phase you know when when the boundaries are being pushed and what can be delivered clinically we're not experimental we wait until there's proper evidence of support but we're not the kind of laggards that you know, the treatment's been going on for five years and we're just catching up with it. We're, we're very much moving at the forefront. So what, what kind of mindset do you have for that to be delivered? Yeah, I think, I, I think, my, I mean, I've always been quite proactive with wanting to learn and be good at things and be kind of a wee bit ahead of the curve. And I think generally as as a group, I think a lot of us are. Um, yeah. But and I'll be like that because otherwise it wouldn't, the, the system would work. So, um, you know, we all kind of pull each other through. I remember when I first started, uh, I started full time in the August, um, just after I got married. And uh, and I think by like December, I'd been on about 15 courses or something like that, like all over the country, in different countries. Like it was, it was you know, tough going, a lot of travel at the time, but didn't have kids and other commitments like that at the time so I was like yeah let's let's blast out and do it and you know my learning you know f- from starting to six months later had gone you know through the roof and that was because I'd, I was encouraged to do it um even- yeah, you, you went through a very kind of of which a number of our dentists have that kind of you went through a kind of intense phase I think that's quite possibly coming into uh, into dots where I, as at the time was our most advanced practice um, yeah. and you know everybody kind of was moved up to kind of deliver dentistry at that level um, and so you were kind of you took over a lot of the, from from myself effectively in, in terms of um, delivering implants and you know you really there was an opportunity there so you threw yourself into it and you know so that's an attitude that we see quite often another attitude is you know I'll get there and um, you know it can take two three years um, yeah. of which that support because it all depends you know it's easier as you say it's easier when Fewer less family and things. Exactly. I was it definitely isn't for everyone. I just happened to be at my time in my life and my yeah. career at the time and I had the the you know the it's not even the willingness because everybody wants to learn, but I just I, you know I was keen to progress because I knew that I was taking over from you and you were obviously a lot more advanced than I was at the time. So I needed to get step up to the mark. Um and it, you know, at times I did feel. Sometimes I was like, I'm a wee bit out of my depth. And I remember phoning you countless times on, on my way home from work, thinking, "Oh, I've had a shocker. You've had a shocker." And and that just went goes back to the core values and the support system that we had. And a lot of it was me speaking to you because at that time you, I was taking over from you. But you know, the same thing now applies. That guys phone me and you know, or message me, and we have a chat, things like that. Whether it's clinical or non-clinical. Um, yeah. Stuff. so and there's you know there's that, that sort of support in, in all the practices which is which is great but yeah so it's but, right, right across the group isn't it you'll get guys phoning from other practices who are yeah. in the early days of their, their implant yeah. training journey and uh, and you know or they're saying oh can I come in and watch you and Jamie doing what you do and, and things so that was quite intense but you know you know um, I was kind of helped to do that um, whether financially or just with some time off and things like that to go and do these courses and things Um and through the group, you know, through your context at the time, you know, things like, you know, with the CFAST and all the different labs and stuff like that, then, you know, and I remember going down to a course in Leeds, um, was it, the, uh, it was the Fast and Fix course and things like that. And, and you know, without having those connections, I possibly wouldn't have been able to get on that course and stuff like that. So, 
you know, we 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 definitely um, can progress quicker if we want to than probably if you were just sitting by yourself booking onto courses, you know, right left centre, and you're kind of guided through that, which is which is good as well. You're not just going on courses because it's. Yeah. Not ticking a box you're actually doing it you're not collecting cpd hours you'll get more than you ever need every year but it's and, that, and that's where we you know that's the way i kind of view it as a coach it's it's you know of which we've got various throughout the company and it's that kind of multiplier mindset what what my job is to make you the very best version of yourself that you can achieve yeah. um that maybe you couldn't do without having a coach you would yeah. you'd always get there in the end but you might tail off and waste some time and it take you longer and things but to give that kind of clarity of, of vision. I don't know we never push into it. It's all kind of gentle nudges. You know, have you thought about doing this? Have you thought about trying that? Um, and, you know, various people take it on board different ways. It's, but ultimately, it's, it's your journey. Um, yep. uh, and so, you know, that, and, and so you've... I was never that. forced into doing, you know, ever when I started, it was never, Jamie, you're coming in just to do implants. Yeah. That way, because that's what I wanted to end up doing. That's what I enjoy doing. But... You know, I was very much, if I'd come in and decided actually I want to do a bit more of that, then it would be like, yeah, that's fine. You know, we'll, we'll bring in somebody else to do more of the implants. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. what, what, what's been really good about what you've done, and you've, you know, you and I have, have had a very similar path because we both did implants, or I used to do implants. Um, you, you know, just remind me again, what qualifications have you now completed? So my initial course that I did was the Smile Tube um, year course, um, which I'm not sure is still running, but um, we've now got a diploma today instead. Yeah, so um, we've de- developed our own diploma through yeah. Smile Fast, which is great. Which is all kind of working towards delivering, so which is hopefully going to be really good. Um, so I did the Smile Tube uh, course, which was a year attracted to that because it was a bit more expensive than the other courses but you got a lot of hands-on clinical days where I, and a lot of the or well, all the theory was online so I could do you know I wasn't taking time at work to go I was only taking time to go and actually place implants which was really good which is exactly yeah. how we've designed the, the smell fast I, yeah. so I, I then um, sort of at the same time as doing that I was doing my restorative um, diploma with the Royal College um of uh, with F- uh, FGDP at the time, which is now changed um, the Royal yeah. College. So uh, I did that, and that was a couple of years down Manchester. And then um, during the pandemic, I think it was, uh, mm-hmm. I was at my implant diploma exams in uh, the Royal College of Edinburgh, uh, Surgeons of Edinburgh. So, so I um, double dip. Yeah. The- <laughs> that and you're now moving into the mentoring phase as a as a teacher lecturer. Um, mentor for for smile fast implants. Yeah, so. I did a little bit of mentoring previously with um, other companies, a few courses and stuff that I've ran. Um, now doing a bit more mentoring and doing a bit more restorative support with with Big Jamie and stuff. So yeah, so it's kind of yeah, it's progressed to the next level now of doing a bit of teaching and hopefully spreading my my knowledge um, uh, of what I've learned over the last you know six seven years since I you know started in in dots. Um, um, and so what, what, what's the next stage of your own personal education? Where do you go from here? Um, I don't know. Uh, I think, I think, I think I'm, I, I'm quite enjoying what I'm doing at the moment, um, but I'll know I'll, I'll get itchy feet soon enough that I'll want to do something a bit more. So, you know, I think my main aim is to try and do more sort of complex stuff. So things that nobody or nobody, but not a lot of people can do, whether it's in the country, in the area or, um, even in the world eventually you know so that like, would probably fall into what a kind of zygomatic nasalis implants maybe some vertical bone grafting things like, like that uh, bone grafting things like a bone augmentation um, it's fan urban sort of stuff and then yes yeah, st- stuff like extra maxillary um, implants like zygos and stuff like that eventually um, so yeah um, but as I say I'm quite enjoy what I, I quite enjoy at the moment is doing what appear to be simple cases like upper centrals um but they're actually quite difficult because you've got to get the contour and trying to get it looking as much like a natural tooth as we can because yeah, it's they, easy to get so, an implant into the bone but not so easy yeah. to get it looking natural yeah like an implant and then just going all that you've got something better than a denture or kind of we're, we're, moving, we're, we're moving away from that people can't you know people are wanting because there's so much on social media and on the, on the, uh, on the tv now that they, they want 
you know, the, the Hollywood smell, they want perfection. So it's trying to, and you can't always achieve it, um, but uh, yeah, trying to do a bit more that, that I'm, you know, because that gives me massive fulfillment, massive, uh, you know, I, one thing going back, thinking back to what I used to do just through this chat, you know, you know, I, I, I came into dentistry to help people and to, you know, and the NHS is designed to help people up to a point, but it's, it's a, it's very much, you know, it's a fair belt of patience and you don't really get to enjoy what you're doing. There's no, there's no sort of, you know, enjoyment out of it. You don't get much, you know, thanks for it. You're just kind of there and, you know, a few people will be nice to you. And we always remember the ones that aren't, but in this job, you get much more time to, to do what you want to do and you do it nicely and you get much more fulfillment out of it and much more joy and enjoyment out of it as well. You move away from a game of, I mean, I remember in VT, you know, you need to get your speed up for going into being an associate. That's nothing, you know, that's never spoken about, um, and, and certainly in our private practice. Um, I can, but it is about relationships, isn't it? It's about relationships and connections to people. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, I can do half the, the speed I used to work at was insane. You know, it's like I can do that now, no chance. Like I, I speak to my wife who's a dentist and works in NHS, and Rebecca says that. Um, you know, she did a crown prep in half an hour. And I'm like, I mean, I haven't done a crown prep in five years, so it take me about an hour and a half to do one. But, um, but yeah, like, but it's not about that. It's about doing good work and you know, building up relationship with your patients because you'll then get them coming back and you're doing something else nice. Um, you know, and that and that's just and that's how you know the ethos of the practice is to you know treat everyone the way we would want to be treated and and give them the best it possibly can. And sometimes it's 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 hard and it takes time. And as long as they are willing to give you the time we'll get there but you know you can't do it like a click of your fingers but um but yeah it's all set up so that the patients know that and the patient journey is is done and um, we're not do, trying to do it faster than anyone else we're trying to do it better than anyone else and um, because what they want. yeah it's that whole thing of just being the best version of yourself again isn't it and so i mean so a big part of that is you know in, in that expectation management of how we deal with things from the first phone call through the tco back in with the clinicians, back out to the TCO to, to pull everything, all the information together, and then back to your, yourself to start treatment. You know, prior to that, it's obviously consents and planning and photographs, and that, that's a whole evolution that we're, that we're going through still, because we're still, you know, tweaking and improving that, and it gets better every year. And, um, and yeah, there's a few, few things in, in the future that I won't touch on in this, uh, this video, but you know that we're, we're continuing to evolve within the group. So just, so that's you, you're working in practice, working private practice, happy, happy with your income, just without naming yeah. numbers, very happy. Okay, that's all good to hear. And, yeah. um, and so with that, you've moved into, um, first of all, becoming a, a partner in the, in the practice. So what, what does that mean for you and what attracted you to that? What's your kind of thinking behind that? So, you know, from the kind of the off when we were chatting about me coming to dots, you sort of mentioned like there's there's scope here because you knew that, that from conversations we'd had that that was something I wanted to do. And I'd always planned to probably, you know, well before, you know, me and you um, is kind of got to know each other to, I always planned to probably open a practice, you know, my wife's a dentist, I'm a dentist, like, we, you know, the standard as a lot of people do, they'll open a, open a take over a practice and they'll run it. Um, but a few of my friends have done it and they've, they've done it well and they're, they're successful but it, it's a lot of stress a lot of strain um, not that you know in, in my job you know being quite niche you know it's quite stressful and strain, strain at the times but um, it's trying to do that once I once once I come in and I was doing private practice and I, to suddenly then have to go back to potentially having to do some NHS stuff I was just like that's just not feasible for me anymore because as I said I couldn't work that fast and things and I just wouldn't enjoy it so I would have had to have gone into doing just implants and that's difficult to set up from, from the word off but yeah basically when when you when we kind of chatted about the, the options of, of coming here and, and what may be on the horizon in the future if all goes to plan then you know it, it, it was a much more attractive proposition than probably having to open my own place and having to do all that and getting phone calls in the middle of the night because X, Y, and Z is hammed or staffing issues and stuff because my dad, my dad owned his own vet practice and he said one of the hardest things is, is staffing issues um, and, you know, filling filling roles and things like that and, and stuff. So stressful w without having to worry, even thinking about my own work, you know, yeah. being... So, 
when I when the proposition came along of of you know becoming a partner, you know, basically, you know, it's attractive because the practice is already established it's running itself i know what i'm doing i get to just do my job like i do already but before i was a partner and um, yes a few other meetings and we have to make some decisions between you myself and, and jamie um and we chat over things and uh, but it was you know the practice runs well already you know i'm not coming in to change anything i'm just basically investing in the practice and, and helping to try and progress it on to the next level um so yeah, and I don't have the stresses and strain of what if this doesn't work out and what if that doesn't work out because you know, what you, uh, you know, obviously with your guidance, you've been doing this all now, and um, yeah, so yeah. it's much more, much much easier, I think, to transition yeah. into partner than if I was to go and buy my own place and and and, and then try and build the thing up. Yeah, I mean, from the outside looking at, there's probably pros and cons. It's you know, I think a big part of it is getting to know. You know, us now, now you as a partner, and, and the ethos of the company, and the, our core values, and, and where we see and, and you know, understanding our vision, taking that forward. Um, and, and you know, we've got more and more of the um, of our of our team, you know, coming into kind of partnership or practices that are in development that are that will be moving to that in the future. And that's just the way we see our, our growth moving forward. Um, but but like you said, it, it's it's trying to give or dentists the best opportunity will kind of scratching that itch for them to, to have that shareholding and, and having that kind of bright future for them as something that is one, it's a, um, that they have a, a, an insight and an and a, and a ability to steer their practice. You know, I, I don't make decisions unilaterally. You know, I, I don't, you guys don't micromanage and, and neither do I, but you know, if there's, you know, we're building into the basement and we're putting a new surgery in and we're investing in new equipment and putting a new LDU in, I don't make these decisions without you guys knowing what's going on. I, I don't kind of ask you to feed into every little decision that's made, but I give you the broad brush and say, present it to you guys, say, are you guys happy with this? What's your input? Do, am I steering things in the way that you see it as well? Um, but you're not asked to, you know, get involved with HR and, and recruitment and the kind of financial planning and things that, you know, marketing um, plans and budgeting and things, all the things that, that, that I and, and the management team control. And we have, obviously, we have people, a, a leadership team who have very clear defined responsibilities. Um, and so that, do you feel that that means that you get the best part of being involved in the practice and, and the kind of growth in the practice um, but without having to, you know, be like the typical dentist, the ones that I see and the ones that we're, we're buying practices um, at the moment, guys are burnt out because they're doing all the dentistry, all the paperwork and everything that, that's hard to, to work clinically, then running the, the company and doing all the staff, um, mm -hmm. you know, work in lunchtimes and evenings and weekends and they're just burning out. Do you, do you feel that you it's a better mix the way you do it? Yeah. Do you change it? I don't, I, I mean, I... I would openly admit that I'm probably not the biggest, you know, business mind in the world. Um, Big Jamie's probably a bit more kind of astute with that sort of stuff. So, you know, it gives me the ability to be involved in it, but not have to make all the decisions like you would if you owned your own practice and everything stops with, you know, the person that makes those decisions. But um, so, yeah, I, I get to, I mean, sometimes I like to know like little things that have happened or things like that, just so I know that things are, everyone's been looked after and things like that, because, um, obviously, I'm here most days and things like that. But yeah, I don't need to get involved in it. Certainly, um, you know, and quite a lot of things. Well, maybe the staff member will mention something to me, and I'll say, right, well, well, I'll speak to such and such, and that will go to the practice manager or the business manager or whoever. So, you know, it's not all. It doesn't all mean that I've got to do it. I can yeah pass that on or say to them, maybe speak to that person. That's the best person to speak to. But you know, if it was my practice alone, then it would be me that has to deal with that. And you know, trying to find the time to do that is you know is. I, do you feel as if kind of the partnership is a bit like this, like being a team captain? Yeah. You know, you're you're supporting the direction. You're bringing everybody along with you, but you're there on the field to play every single day and and kind of driving that. That's, that's the way yeah. I always look at it. Um, and then everybody else above that is kind of to coach and and give that you know make decisions that support you doing what you need to do to be the best. Yeah, the team captain is obviously quite um, quite a good one because 
we are here all the time and sometimes the managers will miss things that we will see and that or the girls maybe feel we maybe don't want to say it to the manager so they'll come to us and then we can speak to them about it and stuff so we're sort of the kind of go 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 to people at times and if it's something that we can't deal with we just say right we'll, we'll, we'll point it in this direction and things like that and um, so yeah it's quite it's a nice way to be you know you you do have a little you know bit of the pie if you like as well but you've not got all the responsibility and all that time that you can be better doing either your own work or having time with your family and things like that so you know it's, it's quite a nice balance yeah so i mean so looking at that and, and i think that the, the, what you're saying about having a, a piece of the pie is is um, particularly important and it's something that you know we've really built on over the last couple of years where you're now not only a, a shareholder in, in dots but there's other practices in the group that you have a, a stakeholder in and you know what what, what is the kind of What's the, the attraction for that to you? Why why there? Why not why not just buy shares in you know Amazon and Apple and things like that? Where, where, where do you see that? I think a lot of it's to do with well, possibly just my mindset of I'm not particularly I'm quite risk averse. I don't like anything too risky, so I'm not gonna just throw it all on, on red or black. Um <laughs> but uh, but you know so you know, I've, I've, I've put my faith in you, as we've talked about when I came here, and it's always come out well, and therefore I've kind of put in, you know, my, my, my faith in you with regards to you running the practice, you know what you're doing, you've done it multiple times, so it's a sort of, you know, it's a wise investment, I would put it down to, you know, it's not that risky, obviously there's risk with anything you, you get involved in, but, you know, it's it's hopefully, um, you know, going to work out in the long run, going to be quite financially beneficial um, whenever, you know, we decide to, to whether we get bought over or whatever happens in the future, then hopefully it will it will it will come good. But but that's a while. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, think, I mean that's that's probably something I get asked quite often. Mark, what's the end game? And it's like we just keep building. You know, keep. But there is no there is no end in sight. And whether that is, you know, internal management buyout or or something, because you know I I'm I'll have to retire at some stage and somebody else take over. You know, and there's you know there, there is there's no nothing set in stone. But there are loads yeah. of opportunities. What's that? But imagine how many grey hairs you have there. I know, I know. Oh, it's not going to take me much longer. And Claire was, was saying to me and my wife um, the other day, is like, you know, she understands that I will never retire. I, I think I'd be one of those guys that if I retired, I'd be not that far away from being six feet under because I, I need something to occupy my mind. And, yeah. um, you know, and I, ha- I have to do something. So, you know, there's a long, long road in, in front of us and, keep growing and, and uh, I think that the, the, the mix we've got in terms of our clinical delivery, you see how excellent our clinicians are and um, you see our ethos of, of practice in terms of service to our patients and um, you see how we, we, we manage it financially so we've got the sustainability in the business um, and just you know pulling all those avenues together with the quite unique part of it is that you know it's we're 100 dentist owned and so it's based on those values of high quality clinical delivery which which are really instilled in all of us um and that sets us where you know i i i never liked the idea of us being referred to as a corporate i don't know i just don't like that and that's not i'm not trying to be egotistical or sound big-headed in any way but i think that we are a dental group but it's not, you know, it, it, it's people, not numbers. And that goes for, for patients and team alike. I think that, that became more, even more apparent with, in, in the COVID, in the lockdowns, we had, I mean, we, not really at any point I was really like, oh God, this is a nightmare. Because me and Jamie had obviously just bought in, but it was like, four, so we timed that well. But, you know, we weren't, we weren't like, you know, oh God, it's all going to fall down by, around us. But, um, you know, because we had trust in the system that we were, that, you know, the practice we'd built and, you know, and everything and, and what we were doing. But also just we had regular calls with the practice. You know, we kept everyone informed. You know, a number of the staff maybe work in different, different practices and things. And they were like, oh, I've not heard in from my other, you know, my other bosses. Like, this is great that we were actually getting informed and told what's happening. And, you know, there was a lot of unknown. But, you know, and we made sure that everyone was looked after. You know what I mean? With all the staff after properly and you know so and my, I've recently got a new nurse because my, my old nurse decided um, to have a week change of career but um, Kirsty's come in and she's like like everybody here has been here for so long 
you know, and and that's testament to the practice and how it's run and how we treat people and and that, that's before. culture, isn't it? Everybody gets fed up. Me, Mark. Every time oh. we have a quarterly meeting, you go on about culture, culture, culture. But that's that's what it means. Yeah. And, and, and you know, and not you know, we've got to be clear this is that not every single person in dentistry is the right fit to to come and work with us. Yeah. But those who do fit, you know, it, it's it's like glove and. and you know, as long as they can understand what we're trying to achieve and, and, and what we're putting forward. And I think that, you know, looking back and never even, th- I thought it was a simple, simple thing at the time um, that we that we had a responsibility to do, but the, but I didn't realise the impact of it as kind of the whole COVID lockdown thing progressed was that as soon as it we were announced that dental practices were closing, even before the, and if you remember, I always remember the date vividly, the, the, the day vividly there was, all the dental forums, there was a lot of dental uh, nurses and receptionists posting on the forums, um, really slagging off their practices because they'd been let go because practices were told they were going to be shut and, and you know, shut, you know, for a six week period or something that was expected and practices were no income or could be longer, maybe three months. Um, and this was before the before that word furlough, I didn't even know what it was when it was first announced. But we, we said that we would make sure that everybody would continue in their role, um, we would, if we had to, we'd refinance the company if it really came down to that. And but everybody would remain, all employees would remain on on hundred percent of their of their salaries. Even when it, even when the furlough system came in, we still kept everybody on hundred percent of their salaries. And um, I I felt I thought that was a, a, and you guys agreed that was a decision that we all made together. Um, and, and I, but my job was to do the kind of financial planning for it. Um, but looking back now and, and speaking to the team, you know, it, it's in those moments where. You're at your most vulnerable that you make these decisions for, to do the right thing, and, yeah. and that often comes out from them that that's where our values really stood out, and that we, we live by them when they were at kind of most critical point. Um, uh, is, that, is that something you see with with our with our team that because um, we, we get great teams, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, that's work. Just started like she's loving it. She's like, this is great. Everybody gets on so well. She's she ended up having all the nurses around her house for a wee get together a couple of weeks yeah. ago, just to pull them and stuff. And they had a great time. Um, I think a few uh, glasses of prosecco were, were drank. Um, the next day, uh, you know, and and stuff like that. And that just shows you. And and as I say, most of them have been here for a long, long time. It's not like we've got high turnover of nurses yeah we do have some that leave eventually like kelly that left before she was here for nine years and and just decided she wanted a change which was which was fine um but uh you know we've had some nurses leave and then come back because it's so much better here than what they you know what, what they had before and you know yeah we again going back to the ethos we look after everybody we, we you know we've got the, the health the, you know health insurance plan and things like that and um spot prizes and you know loads of stuff that they get birthdays off is one that i like i like the fact they do birthdays off that's important yeah so and we always get a cake when after our birthday and things like that so yeah just like you know, nice things and we're going out for lunch tomorrow um no idea why we're just going out for lunch just because why not why not <laughs> why why need it's just Okay, yeah. so that's great. So, I mean, I'm just going to kind of wrap things up. And it, what all this is about is just giving us um, people who don't know us and or maybe considering coming to us and um, to give a kind of flavour of the journeys experience. So, so just remind again, how long have you been in dots? I have been in dots for six and a half years, I think. Um, and all that through into partnership and your, you know, all the support, you know multiple practice shareholding where, where where's your where do you see kind of future just to kind of wrap things up where do you see things going forward for you um i was gonna say on a nice sunny <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, let, let me touch on that do you do, you know do you i'm trying not to to put words in your mouth how do you feel uh, as you know what we make sure we do in terms of making sure that you don't work too much and you do yeah. take all these Talk about that. I think um, it kind of goes back to the sort of NHS mentality, and you're just knocking your pan in and things. That it's a much better work-life balance. We're very conscious of people having their downtime, and, and you know that's something you've talked to me about from day one. Probably when I was maybe overdoing it a bit, and you know, and I've kind of gone beats and trusts and stuff. Them, you know, because other things take over. Two kids now, and. Um, you know, other stuff starts to pile up a bit on you as well and, and you have to kind of adjust and the practice and the company are always very good at, you know, listening to the concerns and, and trying to help every way we can. We had a lengthy conversation a couple of, you know, about a month ago about trying to sort of um, offload some of my work and, and, and things. So, um, 
so yeah, I mean, we've definitely got a good work life balance. You know, um, you know, you can work as many hours as you want, and within reason, you can do you know a few days if you want. You know, I know a, a lot of the guys have maybe cut down days because they need a little bit more time downtime because they're working other days longer and things like that, and then. You know, people with you know kids or maternity leave and stuff like that. That you know they've been supported. You know, um, with with uh, having to change hours and things for childcare and stuff. So yeah, it's, you know, I think it all kind of stems down from you. You're a family man. You've got your own kids. You know what it's like, and and you know, it, you like your holidays as well. So you know, why why can't everyone enjoy yeah. their holidays? So, I, I, yeah, I mean, I remember being when I was originally a practice owner, single handed. And I'd be burning out. I would be, you know, I've been through burnout myself and it's a, it's a kind of dark place to, to get to. And then you take your holidays and you see a whole different world open up to you. You see your, you know, for me, it was kind of seeing your mind start to in, be happy and in, be engaged again. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you still see if I go on holiday, I get my best ideas of how I want to take the practice forward and, uh, uh, and you know, and, and you know, you can, shape things. Come back recharged. And, you know, absolutely. Feel- absolutely. Yeah, but you know, a, a lot so I mean I you know very, very I'm pushy towards the fact that I don't want any of our clinicians working five days. Mm. Um, I know that you know through COVID and things are coming back and a lot of guys, but at the, at the time now we're over the last kind of 12 months I've been saying, you know, cut down, cut back, make sure, have some thinking time, have some downtime. You know, when I say when you you know, I'll, I'll do four and a half days or or do four days. If that other day that you're spending is it's just all dental work that needs to cut back. And also we're going through things about developing kind of um, PAs for our clinicians to support, you know, and obviously, you know, extended duties for a nursing team for you, you know, you've been um, a kind of role model for that, for consents and, and records and things. And, and so we're doing that, but yeah, it's really important for, for, for downtime. So just to go back, you know, so, so just to summarize things, you know, where, where do you see that moving forward in the future? Yeah, I think, um, doing similar to what I'm doing, um, whether I may have to eventually cut down some clinical days if I'm doing more teaching and stuff like that, depending on where that avenue goes. Um, because I'm just sort of starting on that journey, I don't know. You know, I might find it, I don't enjoy it as much as doing the clinical stuff and, and things. So you know, I can always um, kind of revert back. But yeah, it's just really about um, trying to get a balance of work still have good time with my family and you still get enough downtime that I'm not, you know, burning myself out as we've talked about. Um and, you know, trying to progress myself into doing more complex stuff and, you know, probably, you know, buying into more practices and, and things like that. Um, with regards to what we're kind of doing at the moment and hopefully trying to build the company even more. Uh, and again, trying to just stay ahead of the curve and, you know, trying to be, you know, trendsetters for you know new techniques and new equipment and things like that um and yeah just trying to trying to keep go keep building keep building momentum and hopefully one day it'll we'll all get to retire and you know have lots of days in the sun <laughs> never retire for me but yeah certainly different different lifestyle in, the, in your in your autumn years 